Have you ever wondered why we haven't seen signs of extraterrestrial life? Surely there has to be a species out there somewhere that we can communicate with. I mean, what are the odds that we are the only planet that can sustain life that can evolve? Welcome to this journey of discovery, where we analyze why the universe seems so empty in terms of extraterrestrial life. If you enjoy this video and want to support the channel, tapping that like button and subscribing will go a long way. Let's first begin by looking at our own solar system and planet. Our star, the Sun, is a G-type yellow dwarf star. Yellow stars burn at about 5,500 Kelvin and make up 7.5% of the 400 billion stars that exist in our Milky Way galaxy. Our solar system has eight planets, one of which can and does sustain life, our home planet, Earth. Earth exists in an orbital region known as the habitable zone, also known as the Goldilocks zone. This is the region where a planet is far enough from the sun to contain liquid water if the right elements are present. Not too hot, not too cold, the temperature is just right in the Goldilocks zone. The first two planets, Mercury and Venus, are too close to the sun and as a result have extremely high temperatures. The fourth planet, Mars, has an atmosphere that is a hundred times thinner than Earth's. Mars exists on the outer boundary of the habitable zone, and our robotic space missions there have found evidence of ancient lakes and minerals that could have only formed in water. That being said, the average temperature on Mars is minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 60 degrees Celsius. It's nearly there, but not quite right. The other four planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, are all gas giants that have no surface and are extremely cold due to their distance from our Sun. Earth's position in the Goldilocks zone is not the only reason that life was able to flourish on the planet. The fact that we have these gas giants such as Jupiter that can pull in comets and asteroids with their large gravitational force gave Earth a fighting chance to allow life to develop. Although occasionally, an asteroid that is large enough does find its way to our home. Imagine an Earth-like planet with no supergiant planets in its solar system. The chances of asteroids coming into contact with it go up significantly. A variation of Murphy's Law states, what can happen, will happen. If an Earth-like planet is constantly being bombarded by asteroids, then not much can happen in terms of life developing. It's true, thousands of exoplanets have been discovered. However, most of them orbit red stars. Red stars such as Proxima Centauri, which is a red dwarf, make up about 75% of all stars in our galaxy. They burn at a cooler temperature to yellow stars. Because their surface temperature is lower than yellow stars, the habitable zone for planets orbiting these red stars is much closer in when compared to planets orbiting yellow stars. The main problem that is caused by this close orbit is that planets become tidally locked to their stars. This means that there is only ever one side of the planet that is facing its star. This leads to extremely hot temperatures on one side of the planet and freezing low temperatures on the other side. Remember, this type of star makes up 75% of all stars in our galaxy. Another issue that arises from these exoplanets orbiting closely to their red stars is frequent stellar eruptions, which spew huge amounts of stellar material and radiation out into space. If these stellar eruptions are directed towards these close exoplanets, then the chances of life existing are slim to none. There are several other types of stars, all with their own behavioral properties that make it difficult for life to develop on orbiting planets. Take orange stars, for example. They burn at a cooler but similar temperature to yellow stars. They're quite stable and make up about 12% of all stars in our galaxy. However, unlike yellow stars that spin more slowly as they age, which in turn causes them to be less active and emit less ultraviolet radiation, orange stars continue to maintain a fast spin even as they age, 
which means that the habitable zone surrounding these orange stars absorb higher amounts of ultraviolet radiation. High amounts of UV radiation is disastrous for life trying to develop. This is because strong UV radiation splits water and other molecules in a planet's atmosphere. The only planets that can withstand high amounts of radiation in order to harbor life are ones with very strong magnetic fields. If we look at our own solar system to see the commonality of planets that possess magnetic fields, we find that Mercury has an extremely weak magnetic field. Venus and Mars have almost no measurable magnetic fields. Earth has a moderately strong magnetic field, while the four gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, have extremely strong magnetic fields. If this is to be extrapolated to exoplanets, then it is unlikely that Earth-like planets orbiting orange stars possess the necessary magnetic field to protect their atmosphere from strong UV radiation. The other 5.5% of star types that exist are white and blue stars. These stars are much hotter than our own sun, and their habitable zones are anything but that. Blue stars have a short lifespan. For example, the blue star safe is approximately 11 million years old. It will explode as a supernova before Earth-like planets have the chance to settle down, even if they existed in the Goldilocks zone. White stars are much smaller than our sun, and ones that have habitable zones burn at about 10,000 Kelvin. Due to their small size, the habitable zone for planets is much closer in. This again produces the problem of tidally locked planets. However, this isn't the biggest problem that is faced by planets orbiting white stars. White stars are remnants of larger stars, like our sun, that have exhausted most of their fuel. A planet that is orbiting this close to its star must survive the red giant phase. You see, our sun will grow larger over time into a red giant, and then eventually shrink into a white dwarf once it's exhausted all of its fuel supply. Even at Earth's distance from our Sun, we will not survive the Red Giant phase and instead be engulfed by our star that was once necessary for our existence. So, of the 400 billion stars that are in the Milky Way galaxy, only 30 billion of them are similar to our Sun. 30 billion might sound like a lot, but when you factor in all of the necessary parameters that are required for an external solar system to be comparable to ours, we're left with about 1 billion solar systems that could have 8 or more planets orbiting its yellow star. Surely there must be another M-class Earth-like planet that is very similar to our own in one of these billion solar systems, right? The probability suggests that this is certainly plausible, but finding one of these Earth-like planets is like trying to find a needle with very limited equipment in a haystack the size of Earth. Earth is a very rare planet indeed. This is why we must cherish this oceanic rock that we live on. Make no mistake, if our planet dies, humanity ceases to exist. Thank you to all of you for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. Please comment if you have any questions or if you'd like to see me create other space or science related content. Thanks again guys, take care.